Good evening. Good evening. Just a little scripture. We're going to sing a song here. It says, And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior's love or blood? But first, it is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. His incomparable riches shown through us in Jesus Christ. Isn't that an amazing scripture? Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being together here. Thank you for the opportunity to worship, yes. for the freedom to worship. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather like this any time and any place we want you, and worship you. Oh, Lord, so and nobody is restricting us. So All that restricts us is our own selves. So help us, Lord, just to release, just to open up our hearts and praise and worship the Lord with no hindrances. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Shake a hand of two or three and then sit down if you don't mind or you can stay standing. <laughs> Change my mind. Just because you're sitting doesn't mean you can't open your lungs all the way. When we come to amazing love, let it rip, okay? All right.
Sterling is going to play and sing a song, okay? have my speaker when I sing. I'm going to get Debbie to give me a hand and see if we can get the words on the screen. There's a song that uh, Rusty Goodman, Good, Goodman made popular when I was a teenager. And it asked the question that man has been asking ever since he sinned. And that question is, who am I? Who am I? And this song in particular says, who am I that a king would bleed and die for. of how he came so far from glory came to dwell among the lowly such as I to suffer shame and such disgrace on Mount Calvary take my place Then I ask myself this question Who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will, thine Lord? The answer I may never know, why he ever loved me so, that to an old rugged cross he'd go. For who am I? of his words I'll leave you never I'll be true I'll give to you a life forever I wonder what I could have done to deserve God's only Son To fight my battles until they're won For who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will, thine Lord? 
The answer I may never know Why he ever loved me so That to an old rugged cross he'd go For who am I? And the game of life is 
Don, wouldn't you mind skipping over to the last? I want to sing this song that says, I Speak Jesus. You've probably all heard it. It's been sung in most of our churches. If you go to a different one. I hope he's got it there. <laughs> it says, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. It's a beautiful song. It speaks to a lot of issues. And Linda's going to help me really. <laughs> I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, darkness, every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus, sing that again, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Every Burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is light. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn. is life. Thank you, Jesus.
Testing. Praise the Lord. Wow. You know, when we're singing that last chorus, I mean, it's, it's challenging to sing it, but it's a beautiful song. I don't know how many times Linda and I in our life have just spoken the name of Jesus and seen God do some great things. I mean, sometimes it was maybe we were going to be in an accident and all we could call out was Jesus. Sometimes it was one of our kids that were convulsing and we didn't know what was going on and all we could do was just cry out to Jesus. And I can't tell you how many times we've seen Jesus come through. That name is power. Wow, that's a great song. It's an anointed song. Speak the name of Jesus. Yes. We speak the name of Jesus mm-hmm. over all those situations. Thank you, Dan and team, for leading us tonight in some beautiful worship. Wow. And uh, just a few announcements. Uh, we, at the end of the month, we have our final luncheon for the summer. Uh, and we'll be selling tickets, not this week or next week, but the following week we'll have tickets available for $12. And we're going to have our special speaker, Jeff Newfelt. Uh, he's with Hands in Service uh, Ministry that this church started. Uh, we were, according to Pastor Herb, we were instrumental in getting that ministry started. So that'll be on eight, August the 30th. There's five Wednesdays in August. So August the 30th. Uh, Jeff Newfelt would be here, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So that is a 11 o'clock service that uh, Wednesday. And also there's some summer barbecues happening around the Kelowna area. If you're interested in those, there's sign-up sheets back there. So if you sign up, they will contact you and tell you the address of where it's going to be and maybe what you need to bring if you need to bring something. I'm not sure. So anyways, it's back there. And if you want to be a part of those connect groups, uh, you can sign up. And also on this Tuesday, August the 8th, is Glenn and Lillian uh, Mooney's memorial service. It's going to be right here in the Heritage Room at 11 a.m. Pastor Eldon is going to be leading us in that service. And uh, there'll be a luncheon to follow. So again, that is this Tuesday, August the 8th, right here in the Heritage Room. The doors will be open here in the courtside, so you can come through that way. Well, today is Arnold and Doreen's 65th wedding anniversary. Wow. So, Doreen, how did you handle 65 years with that guy? No. <laughs> What's your secret? Jesus, I gave you that one. Anything else? Love? Anything else? <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> kind of put you on the spot there, didn't we? Uh, by the way, uh, does somebody lose some pair of glasses? I know it probably is not a guy. It's pink glasses. Anybody lose some pink glasses? If it is a guy, you can talk to me in secret tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I don't know. Those were great meetings we had last Wednesday, weren't they? If you that were here, uh, they will. They just have gotten uploaded online uh, tonight. I was talking to our our guy, and so they will be available, uh, the two services that we had here last Wednesday. If you weren't here, Pastor Al just had a powerful message both the morning and the afternoon, and so I'd like to encourage you to look at that online. And if you go to myec.ca, that's our church website, uh, you can go to where it says videos or legacy builders, and you can find the link. It'll take you to a YouTube place, and you can uh, watch it from there. One of the things that you might want to do if you're interested in seeing it online is just hit the notification. There's a little thing there that you can get a notification so that every time there's a new video uploaded, you get little notifications. So if you're into that tech world, uh, that will maybe help you. Oops. Maybe I should try those glasses on. They look like your glasses. Are you sure they're not yours? Before I speak, my wife uh, wants to share a little thing that she heard today. 
You didn't what? Your pink glasses? I didn't bring my pink glasses. My, uh, my sister-in-law is involved in jail ministry. Uh, Roy was too for many years, so this is... Let me talk. Okay. I don't need an intro. <laughs> now, if we want to make 65 years, you're going to have to... <laughs> we have to share, right? <laughs> so um, we just made a quick trip after our last luncheon here. We left that day, and we drove down to Bellingham, Washington, and on farther. And I have a sister who is nine years younger than me, and she and her husband have been pastoring since their honeymoon was over. And uh, that's a long time. Now, I don't mean they're not in their, their honeymoon still, but, you know, when they're, they were on their honeymoon, then they went right to their first church. And, um, and then I have a younger sister who is 17 years younger than me, who is living on the street. And uh, we are in the process of trying to help her. And so we met, we were able to meet with her. And I have an older brother who is a year and a half older than me, who is bedridden, basically, with the bad stroke that he had. So that's kind of a little picture of my family. We got together. Um, my sister flew out from Minnesota. We had a good time, some hard times but good times and hope. Hope is in the, in the, on the horizon. And uh, we just thank the Lord for our time together. So she flew home to Minnesota on a red-eye flight all night. She flew, not sleeping, and basically bang in to being a pastor's wife. Cooking, having company, Bible studies, blah, 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 until today she had a, well, tonight there. Tonight, when was tonight for them, their service? It's already tonight, over. Wednesday it's Wednesday night. They have service, and in their services, people come and take turns cooking so that they can have dinner together, and then they split off and do their services and their kids' ministry and stuff. Anyway, this morning we just touched base on FaceTime, and we talked about our situation, things that we need to work through, and that with my youngest sister. And then I said, how are you doing? I could tell she was tired and worn out, but glowing. She was glowing. And I could see the joy of the Lord all over her. And I said, what's happening? And she and her husband, about a year ago, got involved with the prison ministry. They live in a little town in Minnesota, but there's a big, huge prison there. And so they started this prison ministry. Well, I guess it was more than a year ago, just before COVID. And started, things had started happening. They were just having wonderful services, and then it got all shut down with COVID. And uh, anyway, they've started again, and it has just been an amazing ministry. Men have gotten saved, and it's, just, it's a men's prison, but wonderful. I mean, every time she tells me about it, she's so excited. And today, she, they had just started, their church is doing Alpha in the prison. Everybody know what Alpha is? It's all about learning about Jesus. And uh, so they started last night. And she, the minute at her table, uh, they start with an icebreaker and tell a little bit of, they had, to, they had to say their first name, and then they had to say a adjective that was in the same letter. So, uh, Greg, gracious Greg, something like that. So they had to go around, and it was just amazing, this icebreaker. And then they got into sharing a little bit. And one man said, and, and they knew the situation. Some of the men that came from the services that they have on Sunday, she had shared about our youngest sister who was living on the street. And a lot of these men have been there. And so one man she, Ethel said every single man that came in that door that knew that I had shared about my sister asked me how my sister was doing because they knew she was making a trip. It was just beautiful. Anyway, so the men started to share a little bit about themselves. And one man, he said, she, she actually told me that two of their wives, two of these men's wives had died from heroin overdoses. And uh, then one man shared... He said, you know, he said, I was living on the street, 
And I was just, and one, it was his wife, one of his, that died of a, an overdose. And he was ready to give up. He said, I went down under this bridge, and I was just going to end it all. And I said, God, if you're really up there, I need you to rescue me. And he said, all of a sudden, he heard police sirens coming from everywhere. Four police cars. His friends had contacted the police, unbeknownst to him, and four police cars. And all these policemen ran down under this bridge and said, we're not here to arrest you. We're here to rescue you. <laughs> Isn't God good? God is good. He's still at work. And... I said, when she was done talking, I says, there's got to be a, brown, a prison around here we can get involved in. <laughs> I mean, it's revitalizing. It's so exciting to be able to do something where you see people's lives being changed. And I, I thought that would encourage you tonight. I was just flying high when she was done, wiping the tears away, thanking God that he's at work. He's at work. And we know he's at work in our youngest sister. And I encourage you. If you have somebody like that in your life, or have had, or you know somebody that does, have hope. Keep praying, keep believing, keep doing what you can. Don't enable them, but keep doing what you can in their lives to encourage them. And speak the name of Jesus over yes, them. Yes, <laughs> I sing that song over my family all the time. It's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. We are in Acts chapter 3 tonight, Acts chapter 3, and uh, beginning at verse 1. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple course, walking and jumping and praising God. You remember that Sunday school course? He went walking and leaping and praising God. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and, and came and running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. Talk about Holy Ghost boldness. Can you imagine them getting preached like that in church this Sunday? <laughs> you killed the author of life. God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. We thank you for the name of Jesus, that powerful name, that glorious name, that name that's above all other names, 
And tonight, Lord, there's anyone in this room that has a need. We speak the name of Jesus over those needs right now, whether it's healing, whether it's encouragement, whether it's finances, whether it's loneliness, whatever it might be. We speak the name of Jesus over every situation, over our lost loved ones, our wayward children, our wayward grandchildren, our wayward great-grandchildren. We speak the name of Jesus over them. God, we know that there is nothing that is impossible with you. You're the God Almighty. Hallelujah. You're the God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. We can speak that name of Jesus. It's still relevant tonight. It's still as powerful tonight as it was 2,000 years ago. It hasn't diminished. It hasn't grown weaker. It's the same name that, that Peter declared over that crippled. And God, we can declare it tonight the name of Jesus. So, Father, we just pray tonight that as we look at your word, faith will arise in our hearts, and we will just be able to believe you for great and mighty things. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. You know, as we look at the book of Acts, it doesn't take long to see that these disciples, apostles, were very different than the ones in the four Gospels. I mean, uh, in the Gospels, we read of their fear, we read... Uh, you know, that they were more interested in positions uh, than serving. Uh, we also read about their lack of prayer. I mean, but in Acts, it is a different story. And there are at least two huge differences uh, for the disciples. One, of course, is that they saw Jesus alive. Uh, had a huge impact. And, of course, the other one is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I mean, those became two powerful things that happen in the lives of these followers. And so uh, after they were filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, they just went out in power and authority proclaiming the name of Jesus. And uh, they had a new courage. I mean, can you imagine Peter speaking this? I mean, remember <laughs> in the end of the Gospels where he denies Jesus three times? The same Peter here is boldly <laughs> declaring, you, you know, you crucified him. You, know, you put him on the cross. You did this. I mean, it's a different Peter because thou, this Peter, is so full of God's spirit. So as we come into Acts chapter 3, we see a new habit that is now taking place. Peter and John are on their way up to the place of prayer, prayer meeting. Isn't that good? St. Peter and John who, who watched uh, couldn't watch Jesus and pray with him for one hour in the garden. Here they are on their way to the temple to pray. And an amazing thing happens here as they're going to this prayer meeting. Here is a crippled man lying at the gate, begging away. And, and Peter, you know, full of faith, he says, look at us. And the man got his attention. Of course, he was expecting to receive something. He didn't know that preachers were poor, you know, but he... He was looking for something. Well, preachers back then maybe were poor. Maybe tonight, t now we're not so poor. But anyways, we won't get into that subject. But this cripple, you know, he was looking for some money. And, uh, but Peter said, we don't, we don't have silver or gold, but we have something better. We have something better. And he speaks to this man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. What power there is in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Amen. Are you believers here tonight? There is power in the name of Jesus. Now, Peter, he went a step further. He didn't just utter those words, but he took the man by his right hand, and he helped him up. And the Bible says, instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he began to jump. He was so excited to be healed that he went into the church walking and jumping and praising God. Kind of sounds like he's a Pentecostal, huh? Uh, needless to say, he stirred up quite a commotion. For, for years, you know, this cripple had been at the door begging, and everyone would have known this man. I mean, you know, he just became maybe an eyesore, you know, I mean, he was always there just begging and stuff. And, you know, after a while, people get almost immune to it. They just keep walking by. You see right here in Kelowna, right, uh, the beggars, you know, the people that are begging on the side of the road. And pretty soon we just kind of get used to it and almost get immune to it, and we just keep walking by. And um, 
Every one of these times, you should surprise them and stop and give them something. Wouldn't that be a shock, huh? Linda's mom, I don't think she ever drove by anybody that was homeless on the street. She always carried, I think, sandwiches or something. She always got them something to eat. That was her mom. But, uh, so, you know, this, so this beggar was by the side of the road, and, and of course, everybody would have known he was there. Uh, but all of a sudden now, he's no longer begging. He's no longer crippled. But this man is now healed, and uh, he's, people are astonished. And so Peter used this occasion to preach his second outdoor message. And so we had one in chapter 2, and now we got the second one here in chapter 3. And, and tonight I want us to look at, uh, take a closer look at healing then and now. So there's, there's about seven things I want to share with you tonight. Uh, the, the first is, you know, the, the record of healing. The Bible is full of many accounts of divine healing. I mean, you know, from Old Testament through New Testament, uh, we see so many accounts of divine healing. Uh, divine healing is when God steps in, and there's no doubt that God has brought about a miracle. We read of, you know, again, divine healing through Elijah, Elisha, and, you know, many of the prophets, and then even in the New Testament, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, did a lot of healings, and even in the apostles, in the book of Acts, a lot of healings that took place. For 2,000 years, you know, a number of years ago, I just got really interested in healing. And so I started to read about, you know, some of the great um, men and women who really had a healing ministry. My sister, when she was just about, I think she was about two or three, uh, was born with, with legs that weren't quite right. And so my mom and dad had taken her to, you know, doctors and stuff. And, and so she was wearing braces on her legs. And, uh, and the doctors basically said she'll probably always have to have braces on her legs. Uh, that was the verdict that was given. Well, my mom and dad, uh, you know, uh, they didn't quite believe that that was to be the way, that was the way it should be. <laughs> uh, or Roberts came to Vancouver. And that was back in the 50s. How many of you remember that? Ah, some of you were around. All of you were around, but you maybe didn't have the opportunity. But he came to, he came to Vancouver. And my mom and dad, we were living in Campbell River at that time on the island. My mom and dad uh, drove down the island, got on the ferry, went over to Vancouver. And they took my little sister up into the prayer line to be prayed for. And my sister today does not need any braces. She walks with no problem, uh, totally healed, totally healed. So, you know, medicine could not do it. They tried, but they couldn't do it. But God did. God stepped in, and my sister is healed. Uh, God did a wonderful miracle. In fact, she's doing a little vacation right now on the Oregon coast bike riding and doing all the stuff. She's almost as tall as me. She's 5'11 and 3 quarters. She never wanted to admit she was 6 foot. 5'11 and 3 quarters and just very tall, upright, and just walks perfectly. And, you know, so over the years, uh, you know, God has raised up, you know, people like or Roberts, I mean, Catherine Coleman, you know, and some of these, you know, I mean, there's some questions and maybe some of the things they did, but, you know, there's been a lot of those ministries. In fact, you know, Linda and I uh, started off in Four Square, and our, the founder of Four Square was Amy Simple McPherson, and she had quite a healing ministry as well. So there's no doubt, you know, down through the thousands of years that there have been many notable healings that could be verified. And so without a doubt, you know, we believe that God can still heal today. And which brings me to the second point, is divine healing for today? And I, I have to personally say I believe it is. Uh, that anyone, everyone uh, that believes in healing, a lot of us have seen healings. Uh, what, well, you know, I've read a lot of accounts. And, you know, besides just reading the scriptures, I haven't seen anything in the scripture that tells me not to believe it's for today. I haven't seen anything. You know, some people th don't think it's for today, but I personally have not seen anything in the scripture that makes me think that healing is not for today, that God can still heal. And plus, not only do I believe this Bible teaches that, 
but I've also experienced it. Linda and I have both experienced divine healing where God came and, and touched us. And I've, I've shared this before where I used to have nosebleeds all the time. I mean, you know, uh, my nose would just start bleeding. You know, I, I would be in the middle of preaching like I am right now, and all of a sudden I just feel it start to drip. You know, and I had to get my hanky out, you know, and, and, and put it over my nose, and I continued to preach. <laughs> and I had to do that a, quite a few times. It's a little embarrassing having a nosebleed in the middle of a sermon. Try it. No, don't try it. But I, I was prayed for, and I never had a nosebleed since. That was back in the early 1970s. So you're, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that God doesn't heal when I've experienced it personally. He does heal. And, of course, uh, you know, I won't, Linda's had healings. We've seen it with our boys. Does everyone get prayed for that gets healed? No, I don't understand some of that, but God does heal. Uh, and so, so for many of us in this room, there's no doubt in our minds that Jesus still heals today. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, he, divine versus normal healing. There is a divine healing when God steps in and brings about a quick healing. Now, my dad had nosebleed problems too. And he was prayed for, but he still had nosebleed problems. And he went, you know, to the doctor and got him, uh, you know, they cauterized him or something, you know. I mean, uh, but he... As far as I know, he struggled for years and years, and I don't understand why he suffered with nosebleeds, but I got healed. So I, I don't understand. I don't have an answer for that, you know. Uh, we can say, well, maybe there's lack of faith there. I don't know. But I do know that God does heal. But there is a divine healing, and then there's normal healing. Normal healing takes place when we use medicine and with time. Now, in Matthew chapter 8, Verse 14 and 15, we have the account where Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. You remember that story? She was sick with fever. Now, given time and medicine, she probably would have got better. But when Jesus touched her, she was instantly healed. She got up and served them. When God created our bodies, I believe he also made them to heal themselves. Cut yourself, it will heal. Break your bones, Set them, and they will get. They will heal. They will mend. So God has, you know, created a healing process within our own bodies. Uh, so that is one kind of healing. He's also created medicines that people have used for thousands of years. You know, Linda and I worked with First Nations people for many years, and there were certain things that they found in nature that they would use. You know, to help with this or that, you know, and uh, we're in Africa, you know, we see the same thing. Uh, the Africans, they have found certain things that they use, you know, to, to, you know, heal this or to, you know, this kind of medicine. And so we have those uh, things that are available in our world. God has also given wisdom to men and women who serve as doctors and nurses in the medical field. You know, uh, Paul traveled with a doctor, Dr. Luke. He was a doctor, and he wrote, of course, the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So, so how many times have we taken medicine and asked Jesus to heal us? I remember a story my father-in-law and his dad told many years ago. He had this guy in his church, and uh, he was given a testimony. You know, back in those days, you know, we had a lot of testimonies. And he got up, and he said, I, I, I took some aspirins, and I prayed, and God healed my headache. So I'm not sure it was the aspirin or the prayer, but God healed his headache. <laughs> and sometimes it's a little bit of a combination, you know, like God will, God will work. And so we believe that, uh, you know, all healing does come from God, whether it be natural or divine. And this man in our text, he'd been crippled from birth. Without a miracle, he probably would have lived the rest of his life as a cripple. But God stepped in and brought healing. All healing is from God. I believe that all, you know, while doctors and medicine can assist, God is the healer. In fact, according to one doctor, a Robert, I'm not sure if I'm going to say his name right, Smirling, from Harvard Health Publications, he says this. He said, 85% of physicians polled believe religion and spirituality, including prayer, have a positive influence on health and recovery. And I believe that. 
You know, our Kelowna Hospital allows us people, uh, spiritual uh, pastors, to, to come and to pray for people. You know, in fact, we have a little office at the hospital where we can go in there and find out who is from Evangel in the hospital. You know, so the hospital has that for us, you know, to be able to do that. Because they know, maybe not all of them, but a great percentage of them know that the spiritual component is really important. So most doctors will admit that healing is from God. Doctors can repair, they can realign, and do many wonderful procedures, but only God can heal. Only God can heal. You get some stitches, the doctors can't heal that wound. God can. He's put that in your body that can heal. So let's talk about the the fifth one is the role of faith. Almost every healing in the Bible, we can clearly see faith was involved. At times, faith came from those who were praying or speaking, and then at times from the person who was a family or friend member. But there was faith involved. Then in our text here, you know, it's, it's not clear. Was the crippled man, was, did he have faith, or was it Peter, Peter and John? It almost appears, appears to be like Peter and John, because they, they, they said to the man, you know, silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, give unto you. You know, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and rock. And they, and they picked them up. You know, so where did the healing take place? It seems like as Peter started to pull him up, healing came to him. He was healed as he, in the process of being picked up. That, that is an amazing thing. Now, our Roberts used to do that quite often. You know, he would pray for somebody. Uh, you know, maybe they couldn't walk that well. And so he would pray for them. And he would say, okay, now uh, take some steps. I remember watching Oral Roberts, you know. He used to have those long prayer lines. And he quite often did that, you know, to see, okay, we want to see the healing, you know. We want to not only pray, but we want to see the results of that. So can you take a step, you know. And, and the person couldn't walk before or they're in a wheelchair, you know, they get them out of the wheelchair. Some amazing healings took place. And Oral Roberts, I remember reading his uh, story. He said, I always felt I had the same level of faith when I prayed for everybody. He says, but not everybody was healed. But I felt like I had the same level. And there are things that we don't understand. We call it, you know, the mystery of God. How many know there's mysteries that we don't understand? Are you with me? There are some mysteries we just don't understand. Maybe we get to heaven and God will explain it to us, and maybe by then we won't need the explanation, but I don't know. But, you know, there's sometimes I wonder why certain people are not healed. But in our text here, it was clear that it seemed like Peter had faith, that he reached down. You know, he said, I don't have any uh, silver, and we don't have any gold, but we have something better. You know, we have Jesus, and so rise up and walk. And so he reached down and he pulled him up. And there are many times uh, when the Lord will clearly show us that he will heal us. Now, my wife has shared this story before when uh, we were in our second church, and I have to be speaking on healing that, that Sunday morning. And, uh, and as I was preaching on healing, my wife just kind of felt, we, gave, we, had our, we had three boys and our youngest son, well, he was about five months old or something like that, Anyways, you know, we would prayed for him a number of times because uh, he had this. You got that mic handy. Just, I, I know some of you have heard this. He had. <laughs> Stand up so they can get you on camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> he had an allergy to milk. Yeah, so he was always sick, very sickly, and we found out what it was. So he was on Soyalac, which ugh, was awful. And every time, you know, he was starting to get a little bit older, so maybe he was a little bit older than that, we, I would make mashed potatoes, and, you know, he always put milk in and all these things. And anyway, he'd always get sick and found out that he was um, allergic to it. So Gordy was preaching on faith, and I just was sitting there, and I just, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I knew the Lord was saying to me, take him up, he's going to be healed. And so I did, and I, t- I took him up, Gordy prayed for him, and I started weaning him off of this Soyalac onto regular milk. 
And uh, in those days, you know, they didn't say, use all this formula stuff. It was just milk. <laughs> you put them on uh, 2% or whatever. Anyway, and so he was healed. To this day, he drinks milk. So he's able to drink milk. So praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so that was like a word of uh, knowledge or faith that came to Linda, and she just responded to it, and God stepped in. So the six points, should Christians go to doctors? Well, God created us with some intelligence, right? And um, we have the ability to create medicines and learn how to repair our bodies. And there's nothing wrong with applying this knowledge and this ability towards physical healings. Doctors can be viewed as God's gift to us. I believe that. Doctors can be viewed as God's gift to us, a means through which God can bring healing and recovery. At the same time, our ultimate faith and trust should be in God himself. So while we are thankful for doctors, for medicine, for all of that, our faith still should be in God. And we can believe that God can use medicine, that God can use doctors and the hospitals and all of that, but our faith is still in God and in his word, that God can either heal us by divine touch or he can heal us through the use of doctors, nurses, and medication. Uh, so I thank God uh, for doctors uh, and all those. In fact, in our church in Dawson Creek, we had actually three doctors that came to our church you know, and, and I thank God for them, you know. So uh, in one place I pastored, uh, the, the uh, doctor was a, you know, was, was a believer. And, and people in the town, you know, well, the pharmacist didn't really like him too much. Uh, because when, when he came to fill in, he was a retired doctor, but he came and filled in, you know, these isolated towns. So we were in Port Alice, and this retired doctor would come in. And the pharmacist went to our church, so I know this to be true. He says, basically, when that doctor's filling in, I'm just twiddling my thumbs. He said, because when people come there, instead of giving them medicine, he prays for them. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that or not, but, but this doctor just, you know, felt he wanted to pray for everybody. And so he did. He prayed for all those who came to him. And I'm sure many were, were healed. And so, you know, doctors play an important role, but so does our faith in God. And, and, you know, so when, when Linda and I go to a doctor, we always want to, you know, try to go, we go to God first. And then, and it's, it's not, again, there's nothing wrong with going to doctor. And let me give you my last point here, uh, receiving healing today. Let me suggest six, six things uh, to help receive healing today. I believe that healing is part of the atonement. You know, we go back to Isaiah chapter 53, uh, it says that by his stripes we are healed. First Peter chapter 2, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. And so we believe that that speaks, uh, you know, of physical healing as well. And so here are, you know, six things that I think is important. Uh, first off, Believe is his will and desire to heal you. You know, I, I think it's important to have faith. You know, there's some people that just, you know, they don't, they don't believe. Uh, you know, and it could be because of what they have been reading or what they've heard. I personally, when I started in the ministry, one of the things I wanted to do was really immerse myself into those who have had a healing ministry. I really want to see God, you know, use me to pray for people. And so I read a lot of books on healing just to help you know, besides being in the Word of God, I did a lot of study on just divine healing, healings in the Bible, and while well, I was reading uh, the Word. So that when I prayed for people, I wasn't praying with a lot of doubt, but I wanted to pray with a lot of faith that God can still heal today. So we need to believe it's His will and desire to heal you. And then uh, letter B is submit to God. The devil will lie to us and tell us all kinds of reasons why we can't be healed. We need to stop listening to the lies and submit ourselves to God in his word. Stand on the word, which is the third point. The word, claim the promises of God. How many know we stand, we sing that hymn, standing on the promises? Standing on the promises. And, and we got to do that. 
we've got to stand to the promises because there's a lot of promises in the Bible about healing. I remember, maybe I shared this story about my time, my back, you know, we were building a, a, a church and we lived up on the hill and the church was on the hill and I, I was carrying a piece of four by eight plywood and a gust of wind came and it just wrenched my back and I, I, our, the church was here and the parsonage was just about 100 feet away and I, I couldn't even walk. So I was down on my knees and I crawled back to the house. You know, this is in Peach Springs, Arizona. I crawled back to the house and my wife said, what happened to you? And I told her the story and my, I had such pain in my back. I didn't have any medical coverage so I couldn't go to the doctor, couldn't go to the hospital. So I'm laying in bed just in pain. My wife prays for me and I pray for me. And nothing happened. I was still in pain. I, oh, no, you know. And I just felt the Lord say to me, just start to worship me and start, just, just begin to quote scripture about healing. And I did. I just started to worship the Lord. I said, thank you, Lord, that by your stripes I'm healed. And, you know, I was just quoting those scriptures and praising the Lord. And instantly my back healed. I actually got back up and went back to work. No chiropractor. I'm not against chiropractors. No doctor, no medication, just him. So don't tell me he doesn't heal today. He heals. I was healed instantly. And I got to tell you, I have very little back problems all those years. Stand on the word and then pray in faith. Don't allow doubt to feed your mind and thought, but pray in faith. You know, because doubt comes and we got to do battle. How do you know that our biggest problem is between our ears? You know, this, this mask here. Doubt comes in. You know, the devil brings doubt and, oh, God doesn't want to heal you, you know. Uh, you know, and then you're sinning in your life. I mean, all kinds of things that he whispers to you. But you have to just stand on the word and pray in faith. Believe in faith. Stand on the promises. And then another thing the scripture teaches us, letter E, is call for the elders of the church. And there's nothing wrong with having that take place. In fact, I had a lady call me this afternoon. She uh, wants us to come and pray for her. Uh, she hasn't been out to church for quite a while because of, uh, and she's not that old, but she hasn't been out for church for quite a while, so she's asked us if we could come and pray for her. So we will take oil and we will go and pray for her. So that is a very scriptural thing to do. And then the last one, letter F, keep believing. You might not receive right away, but keep believing. I don't know how many times I had my nose prayed for and it never happened, but I kept believing and, you know, allowed people to pray for me, and finally it happened. You remember the lepers? They were healed as they went. They weren't healed instantly, but as they went, they received their healing, and only one came back to thank Jesus. But on their way, they received healing. So Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today and forever. Let's just pray for one another tonight. Maybe you could just reach out to the person beside you. I mean, you know, hold their hand, touch their shoulder, whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not, don't worry about it. But Lord, tonight, you know the needs that's in this room right now. And we come before you, our Heavenly Father, and we come in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. And Lord, you know every situation. You know, Lord, every need that's in this room right now, whether it's cancer, whether it's heart issues, whether it's high blood pressure, whether it's cholesterol, Lord, whether it's some other back problem, whatever it might be, we come before the healer tonight. And we stand on your word and we say, Jesus, you are my healer. We speak the name of Jesus tonight over every disease, over every illness, over every sickness in the name of the Lord. And we declare healing, healing, that you would be glorified, you would be exalted through healings tonight, right in this room, Lord, right in this room. And Lord, for those who are maybe watching online, we pray for them as well. God, that they would reach out and touch you right now. And God, that you would just minister to them right in their situation, Lord, right in their place of need. God, that you would minister to them. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you and we worship you, Lord, because you are a good God and you're good all the time. 
And Lord, we just lift up any other needs that might be here tonight, Lord. Discouragement, Lord. People are struggling with other issues, family issues. Lord, we think of our own situation with our uh, youngest sister, Lord, struggling on the streets, Lord, and drugs. God, we know that you can set people free. Thank you, Father, that through Jesus, there's all power, all authority that's been given to us. And so, Lord, we just pray that you will minister to these, Lord, that are in desperate need tonight, Lord. God, that you would minister to our family, minister to our households, we pray. Thank you, Lord. We can trust you. We can put our faith in you. And, God, we will not be disappointed. So bless your people tonight, Lord. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You got a song for us, Pastor Dan? Let's stand. your name, O God. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how many times I've heard people say they received their healing as they were worshiping the Lord. I know my own father, when he was working on a car, uh, the old cars where they had the metal fan blades, and they're trying to start it, and he was pouring gas in, and they would step back and pour some gas in and step back. And one time when he stepped back, the fan blade broke off and cut him right across the arm here, just, just about severed his arm. I mean, if he had his arm down, it could have hit him right in the heart. Anyways, he got stitches, all of that, but he was in such pain. He was at a couple's home in the church, and before they left, they had prayer for his arm, and the pain was just excruciating, but they just took some time to worship the Lord, and in the time of worship, the pain totally left, totally left as they're just worshiping the Lord. That's the God you serve. That's the God I serve. So thank you, Lord. You're a great God. You're a great God. You're a big God. You're a God that says nothing is impossible if we can believe. So remove doubt from our hearts and give us faith to believe. Faith to believe. Help us to praise you, Lord, to praise you in the storm, to praise you, Lord, no matter what's happening, to still worship you because you are good and you're good all the time. So I just thank you for everyone that's here, Lord, and I pray blessings over every person. Keep us safe, and Lord, keep us just looking to you, our author and our finisher of our faith. So bless your people tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen.